Hello everybody and welcome to Flock Talk. Today we are going to be doing a little bit of a bird room review. This room has been set up for a year now, so I figure we're going to go over all the things that were put into this room, what worked, what didn't, what changes had to be made to figure out how to continuously improve the space. First thing we will address will be the doors. One of the biggest concerns that a lot of you guys had in the comments was whether or not the plastic mesh that I chose to use for the front entrance was gonna actually hold up to a bird hanging off of it and potentially chewing on it. And it absolutely did. You guys all had your doubts, but the meshing does not have a single bit of wear or tear on it despite the fact that the birds were hanging on it and every now and then they would chew on it. Now one thing I will say is that this room is huge. They have no reason to be wanting to escape it. They're not trying to chew through it. At most what we get is a little bit of that playful tugging where the birds will hook their top beak on it and kind of pluck it like a guitar string. They aren't necessarily trying to chew through it like you might get with a bird that is in a smaller cage that feels like they are contained for a long period of time. So although this has been durable enough for my guys in the context it's being used in, I still would not recommend this material for anything like an outdoor aviary where it's a major problem if they do happen to get through it. Um, but in my case, this is a large enclosed space. They're only in it when I'm home. There's nothing happening here where they're going to be inclined to want to get out. So they haven't really tried to chew it and they haven't done any damage to it. It has successfully contained them and done its job. <laughs> Your next biggest concern was the fake leaves. Now I put these up purely for aesthetic reasons and I did make sure of course that it would be safe for them to chew on so it is a non-toxic plastic that if they were to chew on it it's no different than them chewing on a plastic toy. And for about three quarters of this year they did not touch these leaves. They didn't care about them. There's so much else going on in this room that it just wasn't the most exciting thing to them. Um, when we first moved Newt into the space, he checked it out a little bit and lightly beaked it just to see what it was, quickly realized it wasn't lettuce or a food item, and moved on and showed no further interest. However, when this guy got moved into this space, he got very infatuated with these leaves and did decide to start chewing some of them. He has left all of the ones around the bath area alone, but has been chewing the ones that are hanging up over the door. And as I did say, they are non-toxic. It is safe for them to be chewing on it, and he hasn't shown any signs of actually trying to eat it. He just purely likes to rip it up and throw it on the floor. And he doesn't do it too often, but it's just every now and then he decides that some of the leaves above the doorway need to disappear. So are they durable? Absolutely not. Didn't think they were going to be. Does that mean I'm going to remove all the leaves? No. They're non-toxic. They're safe for them to be chewing on. It's at this point just fun enrichment. A little sad that it ruins some of that like pretty leaf look on the room. But again, he's just chewing the ones that are above the door and blocked by the doors most of the time anyways. It's not that big a deal. It's not going to harm him. He's having fun. That's all that really matters. Next up are the floors. The floors were my personal biggest concern when setting up this space. I wanted to make sure that they were gonna be easy to clean and maintain since we all know that bird poop can stick like cement. And I wanted to make sure that it was going to be able to come off easily and this floor successfully achieved that. This floor is a low textured vinyl, which just means that it is a roll out single sheet of vinyl flooring so there aren't cracks and crevices for stuff to get stuck into. And because it is a low texture, there aren't a lot of lumps and bumps for the poop to adhere to. So when it comes to cleaning this room, it takes me less time to clean this entire room than it would take me to clean a single birdcage if that was their uh, main residence. This flooring has literally been the most perfect decision I could have made for the ground in here. It comes off way better than I ever could have imagined. Literally, when they poop on it, you can use a dry broom, sweep it off, and 90% of the poop will come right off. All that will be left behind is the white urates, and those don't take a lot of scrubbing to get off at all. You just spray it down with your cleaner, give it two, three minutes to sit, and then it can easily wipe off with a cloth. No intense scrubbing required at all. In comparison, when it comes to a birdcage, there's so many nooks and crannies, and the texture of the powder-coated metal is so abrasive and all those lumps and bumps are everywhere. Poop sticks, it's impossible to scrub off. There's so many tiny little cracks and crevices you have to try and squeeze into. It takes forever to clean. This entire room takes me like half an hour. Something I did have to change when first setting up this room was the amount of perches available. 
In the original bird room, it was primarily those sisal ropes. And although they do have the wall-mounted perches that they did use, I always felt like they weren't getting enough perch variety since they did primarily spend their day up on the ropes that were suspended in the room. And that meant that there was a lot of consistency with their perching and not a lot of variety. So throughout this year, I really, really, really made it a big goal to expand upon that perch variety. And we had a tree in our backyard that was unfortunately dying. So we had to come down anyways, and it was bird safe. So I took a lot of the branches from that tree and brought them in here so they could have so much more perch variety. And I'm so glad that I did this. I stripped all the bark off of it to be safe since it is a variety of maple and those can have mold harboring underneath the bark. So I did remove that and then disinfected the whole thing and set them up in here. So now we have two new giant branches in this room that have super thin branches, super thick branches, and they take up a good portion of the center of the room as well as the walls near the food dishes. So it becomes a very high traffic area and they use it a lot. They have so much fun on these branches. They are a prime area for a good bulk of their foraging. They are springy and bouncy, so they have all sorts of fun landing on them and swinging off of them. Newt in particular is a bit of an aerial acrobatic man. So he has had all sorts of fun flying and weaving between these branches and just exploring in all of those ways. I am so glad I was able to add this in here, add more of that perch variety and allow them to have all that more fun. Another thing I had to add to this space was a heater. Now this is a basement and I do live in the pits of Canada where it hits negative 40 Celsius on a regular basis throughout winter. So although my house does have central heating and it does keep it quite warm, we are a basement. This is mostly underground so it can get colder than the rest of the house and I wanted to make sure that here this specific room was going to stay tropical temperatures and warm. So I did end up having to go out and buy a space heater specifically for the bird room. Now this is not an object that gets kept inside the room. Since most space heaters are not going to be safe for parrots due to the Teflon, you usually have to go with an oil-based heater, which is what I went with here. This is a Noma space heater and it is oil-based. So it basically means that there is oil running through these tubes, that oil gets heated up, and then that spreads and heats up the rest of the room as the air passes over it. That does mean that the surface of this heater gets extremely hot. And if you were to touch it or a bird were to land on it, they could hurt themselves. So this heater does not stay inside the room just to help keep them safe. It stays just outside the doors so they can't land on it, they can't access it, and they're not gonna harm themselves. But the air still passes through that big front entrance with the grate and they are able to get all that warm toasty air. And now this room is the hottest room in the house without question. Another thing that I guess changed, it was technically done right when I set up the room, but for whatever reason, I didn't put it into the bird room video when I was making the room originally, um, was proofing, bite proofing the cords. So the cords were always bite proof right from the start. You should never leave electrical cables just open and exposed for your bird to have access to. They can chew right through them and get hurt really, really bad. So immediately upon setting this room, they were covered in a clear PVC tubing so that way the birds would not be able to chew on the cables. Now, because I did want to try and make it somewhat pretty, one thing I did change throughout this year was I changed the way that I set up the cables. So now they are concealed in a bit more of an aesthetically pleasing way. They're still completely bite proof for the size of birds that I have. And so they are concealed and they are unable to be chewed through, but they of course still get regularly inspected just on the off chance that they have decided to really figure out how to get through these barriers. There isn't a whole lot else that I think I've actually had to modify in this room. When I set up the room, one of my concerns was this bathtub shelf. I was worried whether or not this shelf would actually be somewhat water resistant to be able to hold up to intensive splashing. And it has held up totally fine, no issues. And the flooring has had no issues holding up to the amount of water that gets splashed everywhere. I haven't had any problems with that. The fake rock backing that I have to splash proof the wall has also been working really well. When I originally set it up, I was a little worried whether or not it was gonna go along the wall far enough and moisture would still be hitting the actual wall but I actually haven't had any issues with water going in that direction at all. It's been able to stay totally contained just against the black backsplashing here and then the floor. So that has been working out perfectly. One thing I do want to change is their UV light. This has been set up in just kind of a random spot in a generic area since I ever set up the room. One thing I really wanna change is actually figuring out a way to put it on the ceiling so it can be top down. 
You don't super want to have a UV light on the side just because it can shoot directly into their face and make it a little uncomfortable for them. Here they can move away so it's not that big of a deal as if you were aiming it through the side of a cage where they can't really escape where that light is. But I would really love to find a way to either have it replace one of the pot light sockets or get a different unit that can be suspended up there. So that way it can be a little bit safer and a little bit easier to be a top-down lighting on them so they're not gonna accidentally look st straight into a light bulb. And then the bulk of everything else is just about the same as it was in the old room. The walls, of course, haven't had any chew marks or issues on those. I did that metal door frame because Newt used to chew the door frame in the old room, and that has held up spectacularly. He hasn't been able to land on it, hasn't tried to chew on it. Nothing like that has occurred. The doors he hasn't tried to chew at yet, but I'm sure that's gonna be coming in the future since he has a tendency to do that but he seems to be so entertained with all the wood perches and stuff that are in here now that he's chewing on these instead of the doors. So that's not currently a problem, but something I'll probably have to keep an eye on moving forwards. Of course, the wall-mounted cages are still holding up just the same that they were in the old room. The air filter is still going strong and doing exactly what it needs to. It does an excellent job of keeping this room clean. And all of my hardware for keeping things mounted up on the ceiling, holding strong, haven't had to repair or change anything, all of that has been durable and solid. The rotating feeders on either side of the room was another new thing for this bird room's design. And those have been working perfectly. I was really worried when we got them because they arrived quite damaged and I had to refinish them and do a bunch of stuff to them. But we ended up getting them to work and they have been very, very functional throughout the year. I haven't had any real issues with them. Easy to clean, easy to use, and they're working exactly as intended. The birds know exactly where they are. They're a good source of backup pellets on the off chance that they can't find something that they've been uh, looking for in the room. So that is all in all working super, super well. And I'm really glad that those worked out because I was really excited for those when we were setting up this room. The last thing I suppose I want to look into replacing this year is the bird's bathtub. This has held up for three years now, I think. It might even be longer than that. And although it's been doing really, really well, it is plastic. And plastic does harbor bacteria and it's a lot harder to clean. So I do want to try and find like a stainless steel alternative or even just one in a design that's even easier to clean than this is. This is 90% great, but the spots where the nozzle actually attaches into the floor, there are really tight crevices that are really difficult to clean in there. So it's done a really good job and Newt loves this tub. And I think this year I'm gonna really dedicate the time to trying to replace this one and try and find one that is stainless steel or at least a little easier to clean but we'll see what we're able to find and if something like that even exists. If any of you guys have options for that, please let me know. Newt really needs something that has a super, super tall fountain because he loves to bathe in the sink. He needs that long stream of water. Anything that's just like a shallow little bubble is not gonna do it for him. It's gotta be deep and it has to have a really long stream of water for him to enjoy it. I think that about does it. Everything else that is in this room has been in many renditions of my bird rooms for many, many years and weren't necessarily new to this space and aren't things I'm needing to change at this point in time. So I think that's gonna do it for me today. If you guys have any questions about the bird room, feel free to ask. Odds are I know exactly where I got things still and can definitely help you if there's something that you're looking for. But that'll do it for me today. Leave me your suggestions on a replacement tub if you have one. Um, but that'll do it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.